Hello. I'm just bopping. Okay, let's get started. I have fangs on today, so I'm going to be lisping a little bit. It's all good. So, as we remember, we just dealt with a thing I don't remember exactly thank you for putting forth Kalzal's name those whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing his legacy honored you will forgive me for not speaking sooner but I bear a message from Archon Yerstola she asks that you meet her at the High Crucible at your earliest convenience ooh we get to go see Stola She must have finished her study of the Void Gate. Shall we hear what she has to say, then? Ooh, the Satrap is coming with us. I thought you would be too busy setting up the Foundation. My clerks have been well-oiled cogs of this administration since before Ahewana assumed the office. They understand what needs to be done. And I'm curious to learn what conclusions your Archon has reached concerning the gate's unique construction. That's right, there was a, this void gate that we accidentally uh, unprotected. So we're working on that now. Because we're going to figure out how to use the void gate to connect to the other... the other shards of this star. I know what I'm talking about. I was today years old when I realized that there was a pun in this name. <sighs> Hello, Hector. Hello, buddy. Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. What's up, I took Sparky? A closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the Void Gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Vitra's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this. 
So why have you sent for us? Have you learned all of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. What's up? Mountain Taco Panda, thank you for what the tier one sub. You are almost a stream baby. Which exists between them. Picture, if you will, the moment you were caught in the first. touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating Source and Shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Like a cat. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. And what of the many voids soon found in the source? Who guides them here and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning are the most typical. For example, let us consider the Gargoyle, a creature of middling power. Pick up, stop. upon such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. Pick up, stop. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. more powerful gargoyle however is too large for that creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul. We had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. Okay. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the void sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. So it looks like we're going to go to the 13th, probably. Probably. Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. You 
said that Voicent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. What's up, Princess Boy? When the Vault's port Hi. From Alex Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, Plane of Fishers are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the 13th so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the source and its reflections. What are you up to, my friend? I hope you had a good weekend. How do you intend to I get hope your you're answers? having a good week. No. The danger is too great. No. The dragon has spoken. Perhaps, but what some call danger, no. others think of as adventure. You, you're gonna make me do this? To my tale. Damn it! Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. Working yourself up to mowing the lawn. That is a task. I, you I, was most attentive. And I, agree that I have uh, a lot of lawn myself, so mowing the lawn but is to bring along not a thing I tackle. And humbled the cloud of darkness. Well, I imagine my chances would be much improved. You, bitch, don't drag me into your shit. Oh. So much for taking it easy. Since when were you one for the quiet life? Since I got tired. <laughs> Once again, I put my life in your ever reliable hands. Oh, big mistake there. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the void gate. There is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution not a single voice sent will be allowed to threaten Razapan, assuming you manage to expand Yo. the portal in the first place. <sighs> you have a plan. Ooh, Astinian, keep growling. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Leimir was overseeing the project. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? <laughs> yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daymir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for the simulacrum. And were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. Bitch! If that's true.
true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. The great Which Google library. I mean, Google. May very well hold a copy. Yeah, beach. Let's go send Graha in. Make him go sneak around in, in there. Case, I say we head directly to Charlian. Send the cat. Send the cat. <clears throat> Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelf, I see myself being of little use. Go on ahead. <laughs> I still need to find Mirage and tell him about the Kozal Foundation. You just want to go eat some Hanish food. I get it. I do. Let us be on our way as well. I see him thinking he's nothing more than a glorified ladder. Uh oh. Breacher's not happy. No, you join in so you can grab your sister from the void. Damn it. This is this is for you. We're doing this for you. Alright. Where am I going? Charlian. Charlian. Hello, Mara. If we're to enter Numenon's restricted archives with a minimum of fuss, then we must secure the permission of the Forum. First, however, we shall need to enlist the cooperation of a member to broach the matter on our behalf. Who do you think might be inclined to assist us? No one springs to mind? What of, uh, I can't pronounce that name. What of him? He did come to Graha's defense during the inquiry, after all. Yeah, let's go with him. Let's head to Phenomenon and see if he's willing to help us once more. Oh, I have another escort quest! <coughs> uh. Today might be a short stream because I'm kind of, I don't know, a little out of it today. Let's discuss the studium. I apprenticed to Master Matoya at the age of seven and labored under her tutelage for a full decade. I never had the chance to attend the studium. Neither did Thancred, as I recall. Soon after Master Louis Swa took him in off the streets, he was put in the care of another Archon. He was a, as rigorous and practical education... His was a rigorous and practical education in the arts of espionage and survival. I sometimes wonder what my life might have been like had I pursued studies here instead.
this music is everything. Visitors, and quite esteemed ones at that. What may I do for you? Forgive the intrusion, Skalark, but we are hoping you might help us secure permission to enter Numenon's restricted archives. <laughs> no furtive forays into the stacks this time, eh? <laughs> I applaud this newfound sense of propriety, yet in all of this wide world of comparative serenity, what so compels you to disturb a vault of forbidden knowledge? Oh, look how pink I am compared to this this wig. What's up, Walter? Oh, God. Cats are jumping on my desk. Stola, you are a gentlewoman and a scholar. Stola makes everyone fall in love with her, but she is so asexual, it's not even funny. She's 100% ace. I'm not even able to pay attention to what's going on on the screen because my cat is in the way. So how are you all doing? I have a big fat cat standing in front of my screen. Work is work. Work, work. Work, work. <coughs> Ow. Excuse me. Things to plot for tonight. Oh, no. You're not going to hurt my changeling, are you? walk all the way across <clears throat> you have something for people to do you realize that our current motley is like chaotic enough that we don't need your help <laughs> our motley will start shit on its own I am in fact actually very tempted to uh, to call one of my one of my contacts to come visit just to stir the pot. Be 
because who wouldn't love Baron Killian to show up? You know who wouldn't love Baron Killian to show up? Ocean! And that'll start some drama real quick. Oh, yeah. I love the ability to just yes and everyone, um, even when I'm playing the most stodgy bitch ever, like, <laughs> it's, it's wild. Changeling is where I do, I get my yes and on. They really were. Yeah. Amelians would invite you inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. You have my full attention. That's pretty hot. Fortunal, I didn't know you cared. <laughs> I suppose I should praise you for following the proper protocols this time around. <laughs> the scholar expressed much the same sentiment. I assure you, we'll not attempt to circumvent the forum's authority again, unless it's absolutely necessary, of course. The wallet conversation? What? I don't remember what the wallet conversation is. What's the wallet conversation? I have a cat in my way again, I'm not reading. <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. <clears throat> Are we guilt tripping him into letting us get into the forbidden knowledge? I mean, I dig it, and I get it. <laughs> the forum must still be convinced. I'll add your request to the list. Ooh, excuse me, I hit my mic. <laughs> the wallet conversation.
Oh my... My animation stopped. guys. One second. I'll be right back. back. And we're back to running to the Baldician Annex to speak with Stola, who is following us. But you know, you know how it goes. HK Cavalier, it's nice to see you. <clears throat> what did the forum decide? <laughs> to put it lightly. That's, that's a no. What's up with the honking? Why are you honking me? Peace was never an option. It was, it was agreed that allowing you entry was the least we could do. Why are you honking me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wish you well in your endeavor and bid you good day. We're going to the Forbidden Library, guys! Never the same, that one. Uncompromising? Aye, but that very stoicism is exactly what Charlaya needed to guide it through not one, but two exoduses. Exodi? Exoduses? Stola. That went rather well. Yeah, I can simply walk through the door. Our focus will be on finding House Damir's research notes, but the thought of so much knowledge at my disposal has me feeling a little giddy. Exoduses, Exodus I, Exodi, Exodi. Yeah. You'll be heading directly to the archives from here, I presume. You presume correct. And you'll want to speak with the index page when you arrive. It's been instructed to grant you access to the restricted section. Excellent. Once again, we thank you for all your help. 
Oh, it was my pleasure, believe me. May you find the knowledge you seek. Forbidden library! Forbidden library! Shall we? We shall! Yo! Alright, you're accompanying me again? I'm picking this up. Oh no, I did something wrong. Trial, what are you doing? What? Thanks for coming. Now, you, if you're now available, I'd like you and Raha to visit me and assist me in the task I had mentioned. Uh. All right, you know what? No. Not to oversell things, but I suspect you won't dis be disappointed. Ere I divulge the details, however, permit me to provide some background. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I wanted to clarify our organization's purpose for a new age. Okay. In line with said purpose, I've been reviewing new requests, and one in particular jumped out at me. It comes from none other than Rambrose, the son of the sons of Saint Coinock. Okay. Has something happened in Mordona, then? Yeah, probably. So it would seem, and he wishes to entrust the matter to us. While his missive is sparse on details, he writes that it lies beyond the sun's expertise. Uncharted territory are the exact words he used. I'd like you to meet with Rambrose and conduct a preliminary survey. What say you? Yeah, of course. Wonderful. When you are ready, pray make your way to Revenant's Toll. I shall let Rambrose know to receive you there. I must remain here to oversee our operations, but it should, but should it transpire that more hands are needed, don't hesitate to send word. There's no time like the present. If you could go on ahead to Revenant's Toll, I shall make ready and then be on my way. He's so excited. He's so excited to do stuff. Excitable little kitten. All right, I still have Rostola. So. On my way to the library for restricted reading. The more restricted, the better. That sounds dirty, actually. <sighs> Hi, everyone. How are we doing today? I'm just running around in Eorzea, doing my thing. I hope we all had a lovely weekend. I hope we are having a decent week. I have a cat in my way, hang on. Break. 
Let's discuss the Numenon. To think the set of instructions I laughingly imagined may actually exist, but yalms away from here, you found me napping. Had, if I had known Alzadal's exploits sooner, I could have well saved myself days of research. Even a children's book might have pointed me in the right direction. And to achieve the impossible, one must need to be flexible of mind and look beyond conventional wisdom. A lesson I had already learned, but clearly not taken to heart. Right. So. Do you wish to proceed? Please note that the use of naked flames is discouraged. Fair. <laughs> this is so cool! Ah! The Forbidden Zone! Naked blades. Naked flames. Naked anything. Naked! If House Damia's notes are to be found anywhere, it will be here. Let us begin. Yeah, beach. Only clothed flames, yeah. I like being naked too. Okay. Here we go. Today, in a world not my own, I met the most beautiful void-born creature. She was so unlike her ravenous brethren, eyes blazing not with hunger, but trembling, like a candle's flame, threatening to flicker out at any moment. I wonder if she is even the proper word. Such distinctions seem inconsequential, insignificant even. All that matters is the love I feel for this exquisite, transcendent being. Though you are tempted to read more, this does not seem to be the volume you are seeking. I almost started reading Void Sense Smut! In the year 1564 of the Sixth Astral Era, the Amalja summoned Ifrit, their patron god. Accounts describe the being as gigantic lizard, as a gigantic lizard-like being with a potent command of fire-aspected magics. If we consider that primal summoning is an act of unfueled, uh, is an act fueled by faith and prayer, it is unsurprising, if not expected, that the resulting deiform entity would manifest the appearance and powers with which it is attributed by its worshippers. What, then, might emerge from the ether should one who believes in an almighty omniscience attempt the same ritual? Would the scholar himself grace us with his presence? Would some other embodiment of d divine sagacity? One c could this man-made god be truly all-knowing? And if it were, whence would such knowledge arise? I myself have many questions concerning the nature of the ancient world. With no spell to transport me back to the days of old, could I instead summon a being possessed of encyclopedic wisdom of every age? Yet with no means to verify its pronouncements, how could one be certain that if they were true? Cat break. Okay, he just farted on me. I'm putting the cat down. This does not seem to be the volume I'm seeking. Keep moving, Carter.
The following pages detail an advanced method for manipulating rift-spanning apertures as devised by Nua Shan, the ninth patriarch of House Daymere. We present these research notes to the faculty at Charlayan Studium as both a token of our friendship and as an expression of our boundless admiration. I found it! I found it! Stola, quit reading. Talk to me. Have something to show me, do you? My apologies, I flipped open but a single book and was completely absorbed by its contents. Yeah, that's right! <laughs> well done! I think you may have found our prize. Yeah. Yes. The ether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the great work. Time to see what all the fuss is about. Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of Void-born creatures, a talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gift, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings revealed that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal sword ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our artificial atoms. I have been so blind to the possibilities. This species, not to mention its ability to summon Void Scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the seventh Umbral Calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. Sure. Still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomus of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. <laughs> this was no easy task, but at last we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. It was actually really easy, barely an inconvenience. Literally, like the third book, I think. If I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer, see what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves. I mean, ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Why not? not. Why not? I'm a terrible person. You give me an inch, I'll take a mile. <laughs> this 
as much as I would love to start crafting the Atomless, I'm afraid this is as far out this is far outside my field of expertise. Fortunately, we know a Hanish alchemist who would be delighted to involve herself in our house stay near project. <sighs> we have to go back to Razapan. Our business here is concluded for the moment. Please pass on our regards to the forum. If anyone can help us, Nidana can. I say we return to Thavnir and look for her at the great work. Okay. So teleport. Just gonna teleport. Boom. Okay, here we go. I had to take a moment. Ishtola tells me you are pursuing a most fascinating study and that you want me to help. I have no doubt you will be interested. This research log should speak for itself. Okay. We live now. By the sisters, this is the mark of House Danier. I never even knew such a work existed. Few should. It was sequestered in the Numenon's restricted ar archives, after all. It was? But that means every word within is forbidden knowledge. Forbidden tome filled with forbidden research, and you put it right into my unsuspecting hand? I can hardly wait to read it! <laughs> Move, bud. To think Damir were developing such marvelous techniques so long ago. How many innovations have been lost over the centuries, I wonder? Well, now that you've glanced over the notes, what say you to helping us build a new mock Atomos? I say yes! A thousand times yes! Okay. Work. What do you mean to do with this big mouth simulacrum once we built it? Oh, you know, open a void. So there's a secret void gate, and it's sealed in the ruins in the bottom of the bounty. Today is a day of revelations indeed. If the purpose of our man-made Atomos is to expand this hidden portal, then I will need to see it for myself, I think. Manipulating rift-spanning apertures is not the sort of thing you want to attempt without first taking into account every single factor. And by all means, accompany us to the vault. I plan to lead us back there shortly, once we've finished gathering the components I require. Charlan's markets proved the raw aqua provided the raw aquamarine, and I still need a small quantity of astrally infused water. For such a liquid, you need to go no further than the font of Maya, the ascetics of old once favored of the place for their med meditations and the water which pools there is now yeah yeah that sounds perfect if you would be so kind as to fill a flask at, flask at the pool I will petition Vritra to join us the idea I have in mind won't come amount to much if he's not there shall we be about it then yeah 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 
Let me, let me do something. What am I doing? Bum 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 bum. This is so cool. That's a big nasty. We caught up with Astinian. Do you have the flask for me? Yes. Let's go! I have a need for Astinian's lance. <clears throat> the ship is yours to command. We set sail at once. Oh, this is so exciting. How's the doll's legacy to see the truth of a legend with mine own eyes? All aboard for the treasure vault. Yes! Uh, oh, God. My face itches. I have, like, cat hair on my face. Please be voice acted. The ruins alone were impressive enough, but I never dreamed such a treasure lay hidden in the depths of the bounty. It may have been helpful to know this device existed, Your Excellency. My apologies. The gate was a secret I shared with none but my closest advisors. I feared for what might happen should those with ill intentions learn of its existence. What is it you're doing now? There's something I wish to verify. 
The NOAA reports claim that a short stint into the void carries little risk of etheric imbalance. Should one suffer an injury, however, or if one's expedition drags on longer than intended, that risk becomes significantly greater. Mm. Gra have theorized that a warding scale would confer protection from the void's corrupting influence. But I would prefer to test that hypothesis before we set foot in the 13th ourselves. So, this is an experiment of sorts? Yes, an experiment. Tell me, how would you go about testing the efficacy of the warding scale? Might as well go myself. And how would you do that? The gate is still too small for any of us to pass through. Estinian is correct, which is why I've elected to send a familiar in our stead. Oh, okay. Now, a lowly imp can navigate a fissure, no matter how narrow. Which means an arcane entity of similar stature should be able to manage the same. I hadn't wanted it to come to this, but no other familiars will do. Can I I'm get afraid. familiar with you? <laughs> I mislike the sound of that. What manner of fiend does she mean to summon? Ocean rise and cloud bank form from mountain spring and rainfall storm from river flow and life be born. Water, water, frost and fire. your arms I fear she's been possessed yeah oh come now that was adorable No, not my first choice. These familiars I conceived of as a child have the best chance of fitting through the gate. I only wish my younger self had considered a more dignified ending to the creation ritual. <laughs> In any case, these two should serve as well. This one will bear a warding scale. And when they return from the 13th, we can observe how the talisman, or absence thereof, has affected the progress of the Void's corruption. Okay. If I could impose upon you to open the gate. Your Excellency? Ah, yes, of course. We should also be wary of Void Sense slipping through while we conduct our experiment. Estinian, you are to keep Nidana safe from harm. As you say. You had best be on your guard as well. Oh, I'm in my armor, so. I'm gonna mock her. Froth and foam! Oh, are you volunteering to join the Nixies? I could shrink you down, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let us begin, shall we? Nixis, into the void.
Okay, so now I wait. We have a hyperactive elephant over here. I think we've waited long enough. Nixis, return to my side. <laughs> the pugnacious pachyderm. Thank you, little one. You did well. Poor thing. Its essence has been irrevocably warped. of time. I must reseal the void gate. That was interesting. Oh. Oh. That was a sharp lesson in the dangers of void gates. Yes. Yes, it was. And what of our experiment? I'd say the results speak for themselves. The unprotected Nixi has suffered extensive etheric corruption. As Nidana observed, it's well on its way to becoming a void scent. The one merged with the talisman, however, appears unaffected. I sense no changes to its equilibrium. Can you bring equilibrium? Rest now, little ones. Rahel's theory was correct, then. So it would seem. But while our second familiar was untouched by void energies, the talisman itself shows signs of degradation. It was, of course, originally designed to shield the soul from primal tempering. It stands to reason that etheric corruption of a different sort would affect it differently. may need to modify the warding scale's design to account for the 13th's uniquely unstable ether. You've said much of the Void's instability, but my imagination fails me. What manner of place is this broken world? Ah, my apologies. I forget that not all of us spend our days sequestered in dusty archives. The 13th is a reflection of the source that was drowned in a flood of darkness. In Emmett Selk's own words, this tragedy was a result of the Asians' attempts to force a rejoining. They erred in their haste, and made of that world a useless void. Hmm. 
You remember Una Kalhai, the unusual child we met during our troubles with the Warring Triad. He explained the fate of the 13th thus. The champions of that ill-fated world used a stone known as Aurasite to contain the power of primals. But those self-same heroes were gradually corrupted by the Aurasite's bleeding energies, transforming into fiends with an endless hunger for ether. By the time anyone thought to oppose them, Light's strength had grown too feeble, and the balance of the 13th tipped into eternal darkness. Dun dun dun. And what of your own experience? Will you tell us of what you observed during Noah's expedition? Sure. It went a little something like this. I can picture it now. The sunless, Stygian expanse, infested with legions of ether-starved monstrosities. A void in every sense of the word. What you have described in such lurid detail is exactly why I hesitate to encourage you. Worry not, Great Reacher. Our journey into the 13th is but the first leg of a longer voyage. A voyage that shall lead us to other reflections, to new mysteries and discoveries. And I mean to be there every step of the way. She's so cute. But first I must focus on refining the warding talisman. Then I can begin work on constructing an artificial atomwolf. Or I could, if I had the relevant manuals to hand. Might I be so bold as to request access to the Sarthrap's family archives? <clears throat> Your Excellency? Oh, yes, that can be arranged. I will speak to my officials upon now our return. We will see you back in the city then. Ba -ba -ba. Estinian knows dragons. Something's wrong with Vitra. Once Nudano succeeds in replicating the Mock Atomos, the store to the 13th will be ours to open. Will you be crossing the threshold alongside us? I realize this is more my endeavor than yours. To be honest, I have no interest in visiting the void myself. Might we discuss this later? There's something I must do first. Okay, bye. I guess. Why does everyone insist on being so secretive? I at least had good reason for not wanting to explain my Nixby ritual. <laughs> Shall we proceed with our other preparations then? As we saw, the warding scale can be effective at protecting the bearer from other sources of etheric corruption. Nevertheless, the talisman's dur durability will be need to be improved if it is to withstand the void's influence for a prolonged length of time. And I think this is a problem we can address without involving the brilliant but busy alchemists who created it. Do we? Who do we know who excels at this kind of structural augmentation? Garland Ironworks. An excellent suggestion. 
as I recall, Sid himself is no stranger to the Void and its volatile energies. With his experienced hand at the helm, we have every confidence that the Ironworks can strengthen the warding scale. Let us visit their operation in Ralgar's Reach and commission their best and brightest! I get to go to Ralgar's Reach again! Yay! Boink. Oh, it literally took me to Ralgar's Reach without... Okay. brings you to the ironworks we have a commission for you and your president actually assuming he's available i'll see if he has a moment for you come on sid let's do this thing Here you have a job for us. Yeah. Heading into the void to find a lost dragon. That sounds almost pedestrian compared to your last adventure. Hope, honestly, I don't know if I could say anything that would surprise me <laughs> after Medion and that bloody mess. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this talisman of yours. You said there were signs of degradation. Seems the manner of corrosion has set in around the scratch on its surface, which in which case our best bet may be to imply simply prevent the scale from being damaged in the first place. Okay. How might we achieve that? Uh, it's called armor plating. We have a coating agent for strengthening tr trinkets and the like, but I'd be wary of applying any compound which might upset the scale's delicate alchemical balance. Far safer to dress it in armor. We'll construct a protective casing, one utilizing metal alloys with a uh, high ethereal conductivity, so as not to impede its purpose. A suit of armor, as you said. Nero has compiled data on the 13th, so I'll have him pitch in with the design just to be sure. If only it weren't such an ordeal to convince him to follow our safety protocols. I swear, I've never had such a reckless employee. In any case, we, have, we may need some time to untangle the particulars. I'll untangle your particulars. <laughs> I'll untangle your particulars. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay. So now I have to go back to the great work. Oh, it's raining. How lovely. Ah, hey, Stola. The adjustments are going well, I hope. It is a lengthy process, but the end is in sight, yes. That's wonderful news. 
I myself had some good fortune searching through the Star Trap's private records. What I found was a transaction log dated around the same period as when Alzagal's legacy was built. It included a purchase list of highly exclusive alchemical components. And I knew I'd discovered the key to making the artificial atomos. I then visited the High Crucible to commission the materials. After I'd explained my requirements, I was beset by volunteers insisting I allow them to help with the entire project. The usual reaction to someone forcing open a void gate is to run for the hills. Harnish academics certainly are a different breed. The alchemists of old were cut from a similar cloth. The unknown held no fear for them. Indeed, they were ever eager to seek new knowledge, regardless of the danger. And were you not also fearless, heedless even, in your determination? My sire entered his dormancy before I was hatched. And so it was Ashdaya who kept my eggs safe and warm. It created a bond between us. Even long after I learned to fend for myself, I rarely strayed from her side. She was my guardian, my sister, my dear companion. And not a single day passes that I do not mourn her absence. No matter how deep the darkness, I would not surrender my search. I promised myself the time would come when we would once more take to the skies together. But I am Satrap now. The Radiant Host is here to serve, Your Excellency. Navdeen. What is this about? Sir Estinian told us of your predicament. For centuries you have protected Rads at Han, never showing your true self, hiding behind a curtain and living only in service to the people. Your dedication meant more to us than your deceit, and so did we accept you as our rightful ruler. After all that you have sacrificed for this nation, did you imagine we would begrudge you your heart's desire? We survived the final days. We are a strong and proud people. We, the Radiant Host, will keep Thavnir safe in your absence. <laughs> I am grateful for your loyalty and for your encouragement. And yet, now you listen to me, Vashan. <laughs> you are wearing that face, after all. As I have told you before, you are a little brother to us all. And if you are family, then so too is your sister. We are there for you if you need us. But do not ask us to sit by and watch while you abandon a sibling you have ached to rescue for millennia. Aww. We will succeed in opening the way. It is only a matter of time. All you need do is prepare to step through to the other side. Oh. Your Excellency, I wanted to thank you for building the orphanage. It means so much that my sister and I will have a place to be together. 
safe and happy. And I hope that you and your sister can be together again too. Ah, my heart! Oh. Low blow, Estinian. Protect them well, you must take heart. Take heart and protect them well. Such were the words I once said to you. And here I stand, failing to live up to them. I mean a little bit. If my heart is torn, I am fit to protect neither Ajdaya nor Azadhan. So... My people, I have come to a decision. Vashan will depart Thavne for a time. My dragon self will remain in the palace but only to conduct their satrap's most essential duties. While I am focused on controlling this vessel, there may be matters that escape my attention. I rely on you, my trusted friends, to watch over one another until I return. Take care and fair fortune, little brother. Many tears would be shed should you come to harm. I would not dare make you cry. <laughs> okay. You surprise me, Estinian. For a lone wolf, you've shown an unusual degree of, shall we say, involvement in helping Vritra reach his conclusion. It was for the greater good. The worm's thundering sighs were keeping his citizens awake at night, and had travelers believing the palace racked by some unnatural storm. <laughs> Just mocking Varshan, okay. What of your own answer, then? You seemed disinclined to venture into the void. When I was one with Nidhogg, his vengeful thoughts were my thoughts. His endless rage, my rage. And the soul-chilling grief he nursed for Radatoskar's death. I would not wish such an agony upon a foe, let alone a friend and ally. If there is a chance we can spare Vritra that pain, then I will follow you. Uh... Just the four of us? With things as they are, I'd rather not bother our comrades le with aught less than a dire threat to the star. It will make for an interesting journey besides. Traveling in a smaller party for a change? Crowds can be a bit draining, don't you think? Now, on to specifics. Unlike the first, where the flood of light has halted before de its devastation was complete, the thirteenth has been utterly subsumed by darkness. My plan, as such, is to explore the void in stages, withdrawing to safety after each brief foray. It would be more convenient had we some manner of base camp nearer to the gate itself. One of the pl palace chambers should serve. Come, let us reconvene outside of Megaduta. Ooh. What about draining a crowd? Oh! Walt's up with the perv moment. We love it. Hey -o! <laughs> All right, let's let's go to Megaduta. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just need to say it. Sometimes you just need to say something. 
Is this voice acted? No. And so we will require suitable accommodations. Might we make something available for our guests? All our chambers are presently ghosting great mounds of treasure. Good. Please inform me when you've completed the arrangements. <laughs> I have a cat in my way again. As you heard, we will have you settled in no time. You're most gracious, Your Excellency. No, no, no. <laughs> my, I can't read. I only wish we knew more about our destination. Cat break. Kitten break. Meanwhile, in the 13th, uh oh. Oh shit, that's fucked up. Pass unlock adventures for pulses quicken spirits stir. You found adventure, and we're done. Ta -da. Okay, let's go see what uh, what we need to do at Reverend's Toll, shall we? Spooky, spooky. Are we going to... I wonder if we're going to try and cleanse the 13th after we've gotten... After we've gotten Ritra's sister out. That would be fucky. I don't know, man. That would be weird. This 
might actually be what opens up the new 24 man. There you are, Yamina. Could seem we're early. My apologies for the wait. Ambrose! What's up, old man? What a pleasure to see you again. How have you been? The pleasure is all mine, my friend. I've been well, and it gladdens me to see that you are too. Now, I know you have many de demands upon your time, so I shall explain the particulars of our request at once. Recently, an explorer came to us who claimed to have discovered the Phantom Realm. The Phantom Realm? So this is what you meant by uncharted territory. You're not familiar? Perhaps unsurprising, given that it is a lesser known legend. <sighs> the legend holds that across Eorzea, there exists a realm that appears as a mirage. Though visible from a distance, it fades away as one draws near. While it has featured in myths into ancient times, the realm's existence could not be proven, and thus it's seldom mentioned in literature. In spite of this, fueled by rumors of the occasional sighting, the myth has persisted and continues to capture the hearts and minds of explorers. That you yourself should reach out to us. It is real, then. When the first explorer in question approached us, we doubted him, but we couldn't doubt the evidence of our senses. No, nah, the realm is real, as you will soon see for yourselves. <gasps> Sweet gods, a part of me still struggles to believe it, but we have no reason to doubt you. Suffice it to say, we are eager to see the realm, too. Whatever truth awaits, I pray you will succeed in finding it. Seek out the explorer, Derek. He has seen more of the realm than us and should be willing to serve as your guide. I asked him to accompany me here, but he preferred to continue exploring on his own. He'll be somewhere on the banks of Silvertear Lake, I expect. Thanks! Let's split up and look for the explorer. We ain't found shit. It's baby Opo Opo. What is this? Why is there a baby Opo Opo? Staring contest with the Opo Opo? Okay. Just in case you were entertaining the thought, the Opo Opo isn't our explorer. I have the man in question here with me. <laughs> okay. I'm Derek. I'm the one who discovered the Phantom Realm. My apologies for making you search for me. Oh, 
curious about this creature, are you? I found him injured during one of my journeys and tended to him. Since then, he's taken to following me around. He's inquisitive, but otherwise harmless. So pay him no mind. <laughs> it's a terrible staring contest, yeah. The Oppo doesn't fucking blink. You are the hero who delivered our star from doom, are you not? What good fortune that one as capable, of, capable as you are here. <laughs> to be clear, we have yet to accept the commission. Before we can make a decision, we should conduct a preliminary survey. Will you guide us to the Phantom Realm? Of course. I'll show you the entrance at once. walking on water. Impressive, isn't it? When the gate manifested, so too did this magic allowing us to walk on, on water. This is just like Urianje's spell. Perfectly safe, I assure you. It vanished. By what means is it perpetuated? Let's continue on. No, wait a minute. This is the Phantom Realm? No, this is Elpis. This looks like Elpis. What the fuck? Excuse me. You put Elpis in my Mordona. There's nothing out of the ordinary with the environment. The sights, the sounds, the smells, all appear as they should be in nature. That is to say, this place is no illusion.
bid you welcome to the navel of the phantom realm, the Omphalos. The Omphalos, you say this place is called. <clears throat> a name of my own conception, I confess. I feel we felt we needed something to call it by. Lest you wonder, the word means navel in an ancient tongue, an allusion to Mordona's location in the heart of Aldenard. As you can see, there is a man-made structure, and the place appears well-kept, yet there isn't a single soul in evidence. Tis my hope that you will help me shed light upon this realm, to learn who created it and to what end. I should also like to know why it has revealed itself now. Was it simply chance that kept it hidden, or something more? In any case, let us begin by taking a look around. Yay. stone monument has been erected here by whose hand you cannot say but its motifs wrought into its base appear familiar yeah it, it's the fucking 12 it, it's the fucking 12 I am oh I am become error The number of structures such as this can be seen in the area. What purpose could they possibly serve? I don't know. Maybe containing the twelve? Truly exquisite stuff. Yeah. That fucking monkey. What's this? Oh, this is triggering. This is triggering my acrophobia of something fierce. Okay. I love that. I love that. Not. In the distance, you see what appears to be the crystal tower. Though the clouds make it difficult to be sure, it would seem that you are in the sky above Silver Tier, Silver -tier Lake. Oh, shit. No such aisle could be seen from the outside, however. Oh. Alright. Let's go talk to... Let's go talk to Derek. Finished looking around, have you? What are your impressions? We have only had a cursory glance, but it is truly a mysterious place. The gleaming spire rising beyond the clouds, that most certainly is the crystal tower. Yeah. And judging by its aspect, we are a considerable distance above Silver Tear Lake, which would suggest the gate we entered is a teleporter. However, if this isle lies where it's appears to lie, then it couldn't have escaped the Battle of Silver Tear Skies unscathed, which is to say we are in Mordona, and yet we are not. Tis as if we were displaced from our world, if only slightly. Displaced is an apt way of putting it. Was there aught else you noticed? The motifs upon yonder structure, they are unmistakably the marks of the Twelve. Yes. 
by which I posit that this was created as a place of worship. But by whom? I cannot think of any who had, who could have possibly built such grand premises. Never mind could magically conceal it, at least not in the wake of the Battle of the Silver Tier Skies. This place is mysterious indeed. A cherry coke. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Oh, that's good stuff. Well, it seems there is but one solution for our ignorance, a thorough investigation. For this we will require more manpower and supplies, among other things. Oh dear. With your permission, we will confer to our representative Kryle and make the necessary arrangements for a formal investigation. If this is what mean must be done to commence a, uh, a pleb. Without further further ado, let us return to Charlan. Hold, mortals. Uh oh. I don't like this. Um. Oh, we're fucked. You profaned the sacred realm with your very presence and must answer for your irreverence. I fucking knew it! The Twelve are like the Olympians in Greece. Ah! And now we have to fight them. We have to fight them. Oh, I don't like him. I am Byragog, the Builder. Does the Twelve are real? Let there be no doubt. We are not Simulacra born of mortal faith. We are Twelve Divinities True. And in Hydaelyn's absence, we are the Star's rightful rulers. Its will. Bitch, don't pull all your- Closely, we have watched mankind. And we have determined that you, champion of Hydaelyn, pose a threat to our ascension. I'm sorry. You were foolish to wander into our realm. We could destroy you with ease here and now, but as divinities, we must demonstrate grace and forbearance. There is but one path. We must weigh this mortal's worth. Hear, hear. Let there be a trial. While the mortal would invariably be destroyed, it would at least provide us with a diversion. You suddenly appear and expect us to simply comply with your whims. Uh, yeah, they're gods. Protest if you wish, but mortal logic means not to gods. You will abide by our laws. Lo, the gateway to our sanctums lie open. Show us the strength of mankind. <laughs> Show us the honor of mankind. Show us the spirit of mankind. 
If man would remain the master of his own destiny, then assemble your comrades and come. Come and prove your worthiness. Bitch. Bitch. The classicist in me is like nerding out. Seven hells. During my previous forays, nothing like this ever happened. I encountered not a single soul, and certainly not gods. And by their own admission, they mean to take over the star. What are we to do? We worship them anyway, so what's the problem? The situation has indeed taken an unexpected turn, but we must try to think, so think about it. The Twelve have long been revered and worshipped in Aosia, and myths about them abound. But to my knowledge, they have never appeared thus so openly before people. For these beings to suddenly reveal themselves just when we are here, claim supremacy over the star, and challenge Yamina to a trial... It's too much about this feels odd and gives me pause. Fair enough. Yet, as it stands, we can't. it seems we can't dismiss the threat either. Gaius Van Belsar once said that the Twelve Two were simply primals. It is true that even Heidelin and Zodiac were primals, and we cannot discount the possibility, but we know too little to draw conclusions. In any event, if these beings seek dominion over the star as they say, what happens here may have far-reaching implications. To that end, I believe we should take action. Suffice it to say you are with me? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Then the students of Baldessian will officially tend to the situation? Aye, and in the course of studying the star's mysteries, we have undertaken to deal with the, any threats that may arise. This is no different. I am a feared. <clears throat> Let's speak with Graha. Right. Let us deliberate a course of action. Derek, know you aught of these being sanctums? Aye. They are domains in the Phantom Realm that lie beyond each gate. I've explored them all. Perhaps due to etheric instability, there are times when one can enter and when one ordinarily cannot. Uh, but would seem the way has been opened for us. While I encountered no gods during my previous forays, I saw enough to know my way around. I am but a humble explorer and cannot contend with gods, but if you would be willing to protect me, I'll serve as your guide. Assemble your comrades. Firego bade us. As, as strong as I know you are, we know little and less about our foes. Neither their strengths nor their nature. And so, as much as I would like to accompany you, I shall do what affords us the best chance at victory. While you set forth to answer the gods' challenge, I will work behind the scenes with my capacity as a student. For one, it would behoove us to arm ourselves with the knowledge about the Twelve, and I shall begin by apprising Kryle of the situation. By thus utilizing our resources to the fullest, we shall overcome whatever trials await.
Aglaya is now accessible. Okay, so, all right, this is a regular duty. And I'm not in the mood to do it right now. Do the support. Damn it. Oh, okay, this is the eight, this is the eight man. Okay, that makes sense now. All right, well, that's, that is a challenge for another day, my friends, because I am hungry and I have been streaming for two hours. I think it's about time for me to bid you all adieu. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure you already do, but for those of you who don't know, I stream every Tuesday and Friday. You can follow, sub, whatever. You can also sub on my Patreon and you get, like, special access to, like, whatever else I do on, like, Discord and what have you. So, uh, it's pretty good. So, I'll uh, see you guys later. Bye.